Welcome back once again, everybody. Now, I realize the last time I did a painting video on the Super M, I believe it was episode 50, I swore I was done with the painting. We had a few more minor items left that I was prepared to cheat and do with a rattle can if need be, but we got another day where it might eke up to 60 degrees today. And as you can see for once, I'm at home when the sun is out. Yes, I took the day off of work today just because I had a good weather window to possibly get one last tiny batch in. I went to the parts store and I got another quart of the red paint. Now, you can see Super M's really coming together nicely, but we have a few pieces left over from last time that we were not able to cover. Namely, these wheel weights are going on my H, and that's what most of these nuts, bolts, and washers are is to hold those on. But we have a few other little sorted pieces of hardware here. We have a little bit of a battery hold down there. We finally got the grill screen stuff that goes on the inside of the grill right here. Got that from Steiner Tractor Parts, and it shows up in a two foot by three foot piece, and you custom cut whatever you need. This is all that's left of that chunk right here. I had to kind of patchwork it because the weave starts out nice and square, but then it kind of dives a little bit and goes back the other way and then starts angling up. So to get the best possible grids, I just kind of had to piecemeal pieces out wherever they had to uh, or wherever they best would fit so you can see I had to do a little bit of preforming we have to cut a little bit of a hole right there down below my hand and we've got that bend feature in the middle that's where basically there's a couple little slats yeah I think you can see it just inside of the the grill openings right there there's a couple little slats that there's actually clips that hold these screen pieces to the back side of the grill so that's why i had to pre-bend that little bit of a feature in there but three main chunks this is i don't know if this is left or right but one is left one is right and then we have that really small square or rectangle i should say to go behind the insert that's down there in the bottom so that's about all we really have to paint today it's not going to be much of a batch at all uh, we also have some of these pieces hanging up here that is a drawbar roller stop and a few other miscellaneous charging system bracket pieces that Senior fabricated. So there's some old files on the camera from when he set a lot of that stuff up. We'll just go back to that stuff now. I'll let you guys watch that while I'm doing the spraying. Okay, back on this M uh, project here, I'm just getting finished up is a new alternator mount. Alternator. Oh. I'm not going to take part in this at all. This tractor has been converted to 12 volt. Uh, took the six volt generator out before I got it. And this uh, 12 volt alternator was put in. And they had this really funky bracket that they'd made up for it. Pretty shabby looking. Maybe in the art world they might call it art, but in my world I call it scrap. So what I did, kind of took patterns and stuff and I made this new bracket for it right here. As you can see, it's all grilled. I've pre-fitted on the tractor already. Seems to fit pretty good. I just kind of notched some notches out of them pieces uh, so I can get a good weld all the way around on it. And I also give a little extra in here about the thicknesses of three washers for the final adjustment for the belt alignment. So. Then I'm also going to put, this is bush down, generally 7 16 right through here. And I'm going to put a 3 8 bolt in with a nylock nut. And it might make Squatch's eyes twitch a little bit. I'm not using a lock washer and a regular nut on there. But this thing already is an original, so that's the route I'm going. He'll have to live with it. I can't make it stop. Here we are back at the uh, tractor. Got the alternator installed with all the new bracketry and stuff. We'll get uh, some of this protective stuff out of the way here. Uh, it's kind of that eye twitch thing, so we got to kind of prevent that from happening as much as possible here. Anyway, uh, what I did is when I originally start installed this the first time, I just took the original bracket, put it in tight to the head, and belt length and stuff wasn't really where I liked it. Um, my alternator positioning wasn't really where I liked it. And what you got is you got minimal distance between the rocker cover and the hood goes right about here. So that doesn't give you a whole awful lot of adjustment there. So what I did originally, 
is I took two pieces of one inch square tubing drilled holes, mounted it in there and brought the bracket out two inches from the head. Now, things didn't line up where I liked real good. One problem I was having was the belt was running into the head of the swivel bolt right there. I didn't want a belt rubbing on that, be wrecking belt, stuff like that. So one of my main concerns was to keep this belt as far away from the head of that bolt as possible. So the next step I did, I just went down and put a one inch piece in here. Uh, still didn't really like the position of the belt or anything. And another thing I was kind of shooting for is from the swivel point down here to the adjuster up here is to keep everything as much as a vertical line as possible. This right now is about as close as I could get. So uh, with the one inch spacer, I wasn't satisfied with that. So then I went and I made three quarter inch spacers. I figured I could uh, just do a uh, quarter inch at a time. I did start out with three of them. It gives me three quarters of an inch. Bolted her up, put her in there, and things turned out exactly I could live with this. It's kind of hard putting alternators on these internationals with your clearance issues between hood and rocker cover. Uh, another thing I did is I made a new slotted adjuster here. As you can see, the one that was in there, another cobbled up piece, kind of welded in that area right in there. Uh, funky bend, stuff like that. So we had to make a new one for there. And we'll get into that in just a second. Okay, on the adjuster bracket, uh, you can see it bolts down here to the thermostat housing stuff. And my first thing I had to do was get my curvature right in here. This piece has already had a pretty good curve in it, but it still needs a little bit more to match the contour of the alternator. So the first one I did, I got the contour just about right. I was hitting a little bit back in here when I pushed her all the way back. So what I did is I shortened about three quarters of an inch, redrilled the hole, put her in there, and I kind of tilted everything back far enough where I've got a lot of clearance in there now. It's surprising what three quarters of an inch will do for you. And instead of the bend, I did a spacer in here. I think that's gonna be plenty sufficient. And in my scrap bin, I had this uh, piece right here. The hole was a little bit small. Uh, all I had to do was cut it to length, make it fit a 5 16 bolt, and we're good to go. I think that's gonna be, in my opinion, better than the bent up bracket and stuff they had in here. So, but all we got left now, remove this, uh, get stuff cleaned up, get it ready for prep and prep for paint. And uh, from there we can get it installed, uh, get it back on permanently. So I think this thing's gonna work out okay. Now here's another project just getting finished up with is a battery hold down for this Super M. Uh, the last one had nothing inside on the old box. The battery was just in there floating around and everything else. So I uh, got a new battery as long as everything else is good. Uh, made this strap here to hold down. Just took some light angle. Uh, welded a flat strap across. And I left a little clearance in there. I got some good rubber padding there. Some super good 3M uh, adhesive to uh, hold it in. I'll get that on the inside. That will also help protect a little bit from corrosion and stuff. But if you keep a good battery that doesn't get old, leaky and stuff, uh, your corrosion problems can be kept to a minimum also. So, And I also treat my terminals here. That's where you get a lot of leakage from. And I will uh, get some uh, battery terminal protector on that when I put it together. Uh, for the hold downs, went to the parts store. Got some battery hold down hardware here. And what I did on the inside is I drilled holes in the bottom, two of them, and just my loop will come up in there. And that way I will keep anything away from the battery. If the battery gets close, it'll just be on the side of the rod here. And instead of the wing nuts on there, uh, which just went on the rod, on top of these rubber pads. As you can see, my clearance is really minimal. I had to cut the pads down in there. But I'm going to go with a nylock. I'll just be putting a flat washer on with a nylock on top because with the wing nuts, 
they kept hitting the side here. And I feel a little more confident on that nylock nut too. So just getting this one finished up, another one to prep for paint. And uh, looks like we might have just a small batch here to do. Well, here we have the battery box and the cover installed on the chassis right now. I have been to the parts store and purchased a new ground strap. As you see the back back there, that's part of my uh, bracketry to hold the box down, plus uh, the bolt that holds the box down will utilize for the ground for the battery too. So anyway, got uh, that installed. Got the cover on. Still a seat needs to be installed on it, but that's another project coming up here. But anyway, battery box is done as far as I'm concerned. We've got a little bit of paint to do on the hold downs, but other than that, uh, we're done with the battery box assembly. Well, our painted parts pile is really starting to dwindle here, so uh, I'll get busy, get a few more things on. I think next up what I'm going to do is get the starter on. Okay, next I'm getting the studs installed in the head for the manifold. As you can see, I got most of them in already. Uh, the way I put them in, I double nut them, get them tightened in. This is an interference fit on the thread, so it does go in fairly hard the last little distance, and that kind of helps retain these in the head uh, when you start uh, to take the nuts off to hold the manifold on. And let's get this one finished up. Uh, next up, uh, manifolds going on. Got a layer of copper coat gasket compound on both sides of the gasket. Well, I'll finish torquing the manifold down. Uh, torque on these is at 50 foot pounds. Next up, we're going to do the carburetor, uh, kind of a little tricky operation here. Got the gasket in position. We have a gasket for this piece right over here. But there is a tang sticking out on the governor arm to the carburetor that's got to fit into that right there. So we should be able to slide the carburetor on and then line that up afterwards. Okay, we'll finish getting all the uh, lock washers, bolts, and screws and everything and everything lined up and get this part of it finished up. Okay, carburetor installed. Got all the linkages hooked up in here. Everything seems to be working just fine. Should have no problem there. And I got the choke closed now. Make sure nothing crawls up in there while we're waiting to start this thing. So, anyway, manifold, carburetor, set to go. A few more pieces put on, uh, finished up the seat, got that all installed. Everything is working good the way it's supposed to. Brand new shock, brand new pins, everything. And I did add a loop in here for hooking up like a plow rope too. That should work out pretty good for that. And started putting the drawbar assembly back together. We got this much done last night and ready to put the drawbar. But a few bolts to uh, clean up and paint yet before we finish putting the drawbar on. So things are coming together here pretty fast now. All right, hope you enjoyed all that. Now the painting went well. It's actually about two days later right now. So first things first, I need to get these wheel weights put on my H. I'm tired of kicking these things around. All of the nuts, bolts, washers, everything was painted as well. Oh, ladybugs. Oh, those things are all over this time of year. 
So these are supposed to be square headed bolts so that they go in these openings and prevent themselves from turning. I've just been using these grade five, oh, these are three quarter by tens. And I actually put them on the lathe and replicated a dot top because I, you know, that's, anyway. That's what we're gonna use to put those weights on. There, that looks pretty good. Got the row foundry weights on the old H. She's back to being complete once again. That was kind of a lot of switching and swapping around to make everything fit and everything jive with everything else. But then again, it is a fairly good idea to rotate your wheel weights periodically to ensure even wear. Getting back to the grill screens, of course, painted in that last batch. I've got all three pieces installed, went very well. And you can see again why I had to bend them to go around. I called this piece a slat earlier. That's probably not the right word for it. It's just a metal strip that spot welds to the back of the grill, one on each side. And these little friction clips that you just crimp on are also available from Steiner Tractor. I got a set of six, so three on each side. That helps to locate the screens on those strips, and then they're also retained by these little fold-down tabs that are pushed out of the back. So that stuff fits really well, very happy with it. Now the rectangular piece right here that goes behind this removable lower portion, that thing would have to be taken off for some mounted implements. We don't have any reason to ever take this off, so I actually made this screen a little bit bigger than what factory was so that it went beyond the opening in the main part of the grill. That makes it look a little cleaner. You can see from the old piece that was in there, originally they were small enough that they would come out along with this removable piece. Since we're never gonna have that out, I didn't worry about it. I wanted it to look like it fit a little bit better, just give a little cleaner appearance. So that's why I made that a little larger. Looking at the front side now, you can see the screens back behind and also the rather clean appearance we have around this removable piece down at the bottom, no break in the grids. Looks good. And I also got the new IH emblem put on last night. I was able to align the slots and the screw heads vertically with one another. Now, I touched on this before, but it still comes up from time to time in the comments wondering why I abandoned that wider farmall tag and went with this squarish IH one. That's because this grill was actually off of an older Farmall regular series M tractor. It's not original to the Super M. That's why it still had the wide Farmall tag. When they went to the Super Series, they got rid of the wide Farmall and they went with the square IH emblem. So that's why I did away with the Farmall tag. I plugged both of the holes, made sure all that was smooth and nice, put a nice finish back on there, and drilled new holes and got this Repro IH tag to better reflect what the Super M would have had on it originally. So. I think that's gonna look pretty good. Now another thing we had to address that led to more pieces being painted in this last batch was how to rodent proof this battery box. Every tractor we've ever had with a battery box under the seat has ended up getting some kind of a nest inside of it because there's plenty of holes for critters to gain access. Now this being a reproduction box it has a lot more holes in it because it's supposed to be more of a universal fit. So you know we have these back here that's I think for some lights and we have two openings at the front. Now the original Super M bat battery box only had this opening right here. Battery cables would come out the top and then they would go down the front and then snake through there onto the starter and other points north. This one has another opening on the bottom that the original didn't have, so that's a perfect avenue for critters as well as those holes right there. A mouse could still get in through there. That is where these two rectangular pieces come into play. This piece is going to seal that opening at the top of the box where the battery cables exited before. Because I have an option to run them out the bottom, I think that's gonna be a much more convenient place rather than have them snaking out and down. So I put a couple holes on each side of there and this will bolt in and basically cover over that upper hole, block that off. And then this plate, will go in the bottom hole. You see I've made a pass-through hole in it for the battery cable and I've got this rubber grommet that will go in there 
protect the cable from any, any sharp edges. So that's going to basically give us a pretty good path at the bottom for that cable to come out and also rodent proof that, denying them access into that box. Just like that. Everything's covered over. Nice pass through for the battery cable will come out. Liking it. And to seal these larger holes back here, I stumbled onto this solution. I have these little push in place plugs. They're for sealing the knockouts on the electrical boxes. And you know what? Blast the CAD coating off, give them some red paint. They fit in here just perfect. So with those larger holes plugged on each side of this box, we're gonna call that good. I don't mind these smaller 3 8 diameter holes. Critters can't get in there and they will provide a little bit of ventilation of that box. So we're calling that good. Now, I did upgrade to a new roller to go on the new drawbar. Got this roller from Steiner also. The Super M didn't have one of those on there before and from disking work, like, you know, things like that that I like to have the drawbar unpinned, it's gonna put a lot less wear on the swing plate if we have a roller. So, to keep that stationary, I also pop for a repro roller stop. Got this from Steiner as well, and I was not as satisfied with this. Kind of a story behind it. I ended up messing it up, but to try and nutshell it for you guys, the spacing of these two pegs were too wide to go into the drawbar holes. It was about a quarter inch too wide. It wouldn't fit, even though they listed it for Super M. So it's getting dark pretty quick in the evenings anymore. I was in a hurry. I decided, you know what? I haven't messed with this side. I said, I can cut that weld out of there, get the peg off. I'll shave a little bit of material off the peg and then weld it back on. I'll do that to each side, narrow it up, and it should fit those holes. I was in too much of a hurry, which I've learned this lesson before, and I had to learn it again. I wasn't measuring. I started cutting corners. I was trying to get things welded before it got dark. Well, I took too much off of this peg on this side, and by the time I got it welded on, my spacing was correct. So now my center line is a little bit crooked. And uh, I messed it up. I mean... What can I say? If every pork chop was perfect, we wouldn't have hot dogs, right? So we go back to the hanging rack here. That's where this comes into play. So I decided that instead of re-repairing the one that I messed up because I was in way too big of a hurry, I'd be time ahead just making my own using this as a template. That's what I did. So I already had this three quarter diameter round stock. So chopped a couple pieces of that. That was pretty easy. And you can see the straps here are made out of quarter inch thick by one inch wide steel. I had quarter inch thick by one and a quarter wide steel. If I lay them side by side, you can see mine's a little bit wider, but that's all right. I kind of like it heavier duty anyway. And carefully measured everything out, bent it, welded it together, made sure it fit. Drilled the hole for the hairpin clip, and now we have a piece that fits. It fits any one of these series of holes here, so wherever you needed to position that drawbar, it's going to hold it in place for you. So, yeah, learned another lesson again the hard way, but I kind of like uh, I kind of like my version better than the other one anyway. So, I'll probably re-repair this someday when I have more time use it on my H but for now it's just going in the pile of shame so that's going to be about it for this video we have seniors charging system pieces hanging up there yet he's going to address that and pretty much the rest of the pieces we have left to go on the tractor are down here on this cart minus the hood I stuff that away into storage so that we don't ding it we're not putting hood or grill on until we get this running anyway I've had a few questions as to whether or not we have test fired this yet. No, because we don't have any of the ignition system in place yet. And I also need to build a wiring harness to route electrical power to everything that is required for this to run. So, no, we have not test fired it because basically the engine's not entirely complete yet. Um, I mean, we've been doing a lot of other things, built pulleys on. I started putting this linkage in for the hydraulic control. Senior started mocking up the new temp gauge the other day and just a whole lot of stuff left to do before we can really try and start this. Like I said, devil is in the details. It's really time consuming stuff, but I think this video has drug on long enough. That's kind of what we've been up to. Lots of dotting of I's, crossing of T's, things like that. We're gonna keep going and we're not too far away from running. We got some work left to do yet. Thanks for watching everybody. Hmm, generator. 
generator. Generator. As they should be. 